Hi everyone, I'm David Vonderhaar, Studio Design Director at Treyarch. This is our first developer update video for Operation Spectre Rising. We'll be covering everything from the updates to the Blackout map, to the latest Zombies Gauntlet, and of course, Spectre. Now, let's hear from the team on Multiplayer, Zombies, and Blackout. Hey everyone, I'm Miles Leslie, producer here at Treyarch, and Operation Spectre Rising has emerged from the shadows, and with it, a ton of content. Three unique MP maps, prop hunt, updated weapon tuning, changes for World League Hub, and of course, the sword-wielding specialist, Spectre. Let's dig in. Journey to India and Masquerade, where an elite group of assassins have hijacked parade floats during an aquatic festival to attack a US embassy. Players will get to fight in and around the actual floats, but the parade floats are only one of the ways to engage as each side of the map offers very different ways to traverse and fight. The market side is all about quick turns and cat and mouse gameplay. Outsmart enemies as you duck in and out of the stalls and tents. The market takes you to the open streets and local buildings that offer high vantage points facing the embassy compound. On the other side of the map, within the embassy walls, players can take control of the VIP building that stands in front of the embassy tower to gain powerful vantage points both facing the embassy and the street. Artifact takes place in the remote regions of Iceland at an archaeological dig gone wrong. In Artifact, the team of treasure hunters have been hired to find a lost zombie artifact, dig it out, and bring it back to the States. As a full terrain map, Artifact leans into the landscape and creates a unique platforming experience. Volcanic rocks offer ways to cut in and out of engagements, and a glacier ice cave gives some protection, but has many ways to flank and be clever, including a one-way ice slide you can use to get behind enemies. Be careful of the natural hazards, live geysers that can go off, killing you instantly and hurling your body into the sky. WD is back, remastered to look and play even more amazing. The map has been turned from an inactive, abandoned Russian factory to a working lab cooking up Nova 6, you know, WMDs. This allowed us to really lean into the detail and provide new ways to landmark the numerous buildings. As a refresher, WMD offers some insane verticality from the overlooking gantry system to the catwalks and buildings above the interwoven paths and flanks, WMD packs a lot of complexity as you try to work through the different buildings to hold them down and outsmart enemies. Our latest special is Spectre is a deadly assassin. To strike from the shadows, Spectre's special issue equipment is a smoke grenade with unique capabilities. While Spectre's smoke grenade will obstruct players' visibility, Spectre will see enemies and friendlies highlighted inside of the smoke. This gives Spectre a distinct advantage and makes the smoke grenade highly versatile when combined with Spectre's main tool for taking out enemies, the Shadow Blade. Spectre's special issue weaponry is the Shadow Blade, a melee sword that completely changes how the game is played. When designing this weapon, we considered the best melee combat in gaming on top of striving for extremely unique gameplay. With that in mind, we created Spectre's Shadow Blade to be a full third-person experience. Once the blade is equipped, all movement, attacks, and gameplay will maintain a third-person view. Third-person and a first-person shooter creates obvious visibility benefits, allowing for a wider field of view to see more of what's going on around you. Some say never bring a knife to a gunfight, but things are a bit different when your knife is the shadow blade. The blade gives you increased movement capabilities like the multi-directional roll, allowing you to quickly dodge incoming gunfire and outmaneuver your opponent before going in for the one-hit kill. You can easily navigate and plan out sword combinations against multiple enemies. Utilize the camera positioning, roll capabilities, and Spectre Smoke to ambush enemies for satisfying chain melee attacks. To cap it off, Spectre can transition back to first person view to aim and throw the Shadow Blade for a deadly finishing move. The fan favorite party game mode Prop Hunt is back and fun as ever. Live out your wildest dreams as an ATV on Militia or a Palm Tree on Contraband. Use your abilities as a prop to place decoys to fool the opposing team of hunters, who are tasked with finding and destroying all props. Survive until the end, or eliminate all props to win. Our weapons tuning this update focuses on SMGs. Previously, we increased SMGs close range damage, which was well received. Since then, the landscape has changed with assault rifles getting stronger, so we're collectively bumping up close range damage for most SMGs. The SOG will not be changed since it's preferred for competitive. Part of our weapon balance plan is to lock up competitive scene weapons so players can practice and master them. With this pass, we're better standardizing SMG weapon ranges, and the maximum damage has been extended out by 7.5 meters. This way you can learn the range and be effective. We wanted to strike a better balance between core gunplay and specialist equipment, so we've increased cooldown time to better pacing. 
Mesh mines, nine bang, cluster grenade, and razor wire will have an increased cooldown, which aligns them with the seeker and sensor dart. We've got a lot on the horizon for this operation, like more game modes and updates to give you more ways to play and have fun. Enjoy playing as Spectre and we'll see you online. Hi everyone, I'm Craig Houston, lead writer at Treyarch. Let's get into the latest updates for Zombies that includes a new gauntlet, new elixir mechanics, new global features and more. The Dead of the Night gauntlet, Super Blood Wolf Moon, is our latest 30 round challenge for the community. It leans into both the environment and the theme of this zombies experience. Ghosts, vampires and werewolves make their way into the gauntlet along with rounds that dish out weapon, perk and even pool table challenges. Creating these gauntlets along with our round names is always fun for the team. Our goal is to balance difficulty, challenge types and the environment to build a unique experience for the gauntlet. As always, we look forward to seeing the Super Blood Wolf Moon related streams and the reactions from the community. We've made some changes to elixir mechanics. Essentially, classic elixirs serve as backups when others have been used up. For example, if you start the match with two extra credit elixirs in the right slot, once you have used both, the empty slot will be filled by a classic elixir. The backup will always be a classic and works in all slots not already occupied by another classic elixir. The backup elixir is chosen at random, but during co-op matches, team-friendly ones like Nowhere But There have a higher chance of being selected. We wanted to give players who fight in long matches the opportunity to have elixirs when they really get in a pinch. We're hoping this gives you the ability to survive longer and have more options when selecting your loadouts. We're bringing in the Spectre Rising Contraband Weapon to the Mystery Box. The Tiger Shark LMG is the fastest reloading LMG in its class. You can use it to take down zombies and less bullets with its high damage while being less vulnerable to longer LMG reload times. The pack a punched variant, Smile a Megalodon, increases its damage and ammo for a more reliable weapon in your fight for survival. We've got more to come this operation for zombies like the Labour of Hercules gauntlet for Ancient Evil. Thanks for being a part of the zombies community and we hope you have fun playing the new content in Operation Spectre Rising. Operation Spectre Rising has brought a lot of changes to Blackout, including new modes, weapons, and wetworks. Let's get into it. Wetworks has completely transformed the map following Spectre sabotage at Hydro Dam. The explosion has caused mass flooding across the map. The displacement of riverboats and shipping containers provides different looting opportunities and experiences in places that you've visited hundreds of times before and you can ride sea vehicles to new places like factory and farm. Areas that have been the most impacted are hydro dam, cargo docks, factory and farm, while hijacked has been washed up to the northwest shoreline and that makes for some interesting battles with players at construction site. You can loot underwater at farm and we added a boat spawn at factory for those quick getaways. There's a lot more to think about tactically, like the sound of water splashing to locate the enemies or giving away your position. And the way that you choose to drop in, going near or away from the flooding, should result in a lot of fun changes to your drop strategy. Bounty Hunter is a hero mode with Spectre at the center of the action. We wanted the Shadow Blade to be powerful enough to compete with the range of arsenal options in Blackout. The ability to see in third person while the Shadow Blade is equipped gives a lot of added visibility in a Battle Royale mode. Our goal was to inspire those fun engagements while battling to eliminate targets or survive bounty attacks. Like any new gameplay experience, there will be a need to do some tweaking and tuning along the way. Based on some of the gameplay clips that we've seen, it's clear that fans love playing with Spectre. However, some might feel a little bit underpowered. So as with everything we do, we'll continue to tune as needed to find the best balance possible. Alcatraz received several map updates to improve gameplay particularly during the final collapse. We noticed that because of the intricate pathways of some areas, players could get stuck. This means you might be met with a dead end instead of an exit, which could result in death when running from the collapse. To deal with this, we've improved mantling so that players could easily get over some more objects, and we've added more doors, holes, and exits, so they have just fewer dead ends overall. The collapse should be a factor in gameplay, and it should impact your decision-making, but as we like to say, it shouldn't be your primary enemy. Ultimately, we want there to be more areas where players can battle each other for victory. 
There are a few additional items that appear with this operation the players have. Let's start with dart balancing. Anything that can provide additional intelligence about where the enemy is always takes time to get right. Some players like everything to be a fair fight, and that's not unreasonable, but it's not practical in a game where looting, and sometimes getting lucky doing so, is what makes the mode what it is and part of the fun. That said, it's a core philosophy that high power band gameplay content needs to be properly governed and tunable. It can't be impossible to counter, nor totally unfun to do so. We'll continue to watch this one carefully and have plenty of knobs and dials, and we'll keep turning them until it settles in. During the tail end of Operation Grand Heist, we talked about some potential changes and improvements coming to ambush later in the operation. The work has been done. We plan on reintroducing it later this month. Alcatraz turned out to be something that you really, really liked and didn't want to see go away. So we kept it live, but that has the side effect of pushing out when ambush could return. Hey, we've heard these reports about folks having trouble hearing death chat on Xbox One. We are still investigating and we will report back to you as soon as we figure this one out. As with any bug that might pop up in the game, send us your reports with the most detail possible and we'll get the team on it. Gameplay clips are more usable than videos made in the kill camera theater. Save those clips when something odd happens. In order to fix a bug, we have to be able to reproduce the bug. Even a very commonly seen bug that cannot be easily reproduced is a lot harder and riskier to fix than a bug that is rarely seen, but we know exactly how to get the bug to happen. A bug repro is the idea that if you perform a series of steps and actions in an exact order, the bug will happen 100% of the time. Most bugs that meet that criteria we can and will fix. Thank you, and as always, please keep that feedback coming.